everybody, welcome to Living with the Ancients. Today we're going to be making a camouflage buckskin quiver. So it's quite a process just to get to this point of having this fabric, um, catching the deer, tanning the hide, camouflaging it. Uh, it's all quite a lot of fun, actually, if you have nothing better to do. Um, but what could be better than that? You know, working with your hands and <laughs> playing with natural materials. Anyways, I guess to each their own. So in this case, one of the great joys I find is making things with all the products I find in nature. So basically what you want to do is make a nice buckskin. Uh, in this case, if you don't get it the softest, it's not a big deal because you want it to be somewhat stiff anyways. So um, you can use your less than ideal buckskin for this project or any other stiff leather um, that you find. Um, so what you want to do before starting any sewing project is get an idea of what you want to make and then figure out the dimensions. Take all the measurements if need be and you probably want to draw it out. You know, just to give yourself an idea of what you're going to do before you cut into the precious fabric that you've labored so dearly and intensively for. So once you get that pattern and you get an idea of what you need, then we're going to draw it out here on the buckskin. Um, <coughs> we're going to then cut out all the pieces and then punch them with holes and stitch them together with some sinew today. So we're going to be very deliberate in our hole punching, <laughs> obviously only following the edge. So you want to leave about a quarter inch around um, for that overlap in your stitch. So tools that you're going to need, um, one is an awl um, to poke all the holes, you need a straight edge ruler, some sinew or um, upholstery fabric is great or wax sinew or things like that or waxed uh, floss. In this case this is wax sinew, so sinew that was dipped in beeswax uh, to help preserve it. You need some needles, um, a little punch board and a nice cutting edge. So this is what we're doing today. Hope you enjoy and uh, you know I'm always uh, excited to hear your comments and other ideas that you may have or experiences you have in making things or um, whatever the, uh, whatever it may be. So uh, reach out and uh, hope you enjoy. All right, we have all our pieces cut out, the main body of the quiver, the shoulder strap, the belt loop strap, and the bottom plus a bit of reinforcement. So what I'm going to do is basically stitch this inside out from the bottom all the way up shoop, to the top there. And then I'm going to attach the bottom circle, flip it inside out, and then attach the belt loop and the strap. So it should be a lot of fun. Just uh, take care to make very even punches with your awl or uh, your leather punch, whatever you may be using. And uh, just take your time and enjoy the process um, because in the end, you'll be that much happier with the product. All right, here we go. So when you're stitching with sinew, you'll find that it tends to have a natural taper as it's separated a few more fibers maybe at one end than the other. So what you want to do is clean that sinew as it's wax that it will hold together nicely, um, but clean it of any excess wax or any little fibers that are off to the side 
and then weave the thin end through your needle and use that end to stitch forward. Leaving the blunter end for the rear, it will help to hold it in place and make stitching that much easier. All right, so what happens when you come to the end of the string? You need to splice a new one in. So you're gonna follow the same pathway as that particular piece so that you pop out the same hole along the seam. Then what you do is with the little extra bits, you just weave them back in and ensure that these two strings overlap in at least three stitches. Um, that way um, they'll be extra strong and you can avoid any kind of slippage. You don't want to tie any knots because if the knot breaks then the string will just pull right out. So overlapping them this way um, creates a much more stable seam over the long term. Whenever you're attaching two pieces together, you may want to pin them to ensure that they stay in proper alignment. As you tug and pull and penetrate them with the awl, it's easy for that seam line to kind of sneak away on you. So you have to be extra careful. And so by pinning it, you just make a couple stitches, hold it fast, and then you can do a couple more, a couple more, or you could do a series of them if you're extra careful. But be mindful of that, um, it's very helpful. Um, you could also pin it ahead of time, make like one stitch here, one here, and just put a tiny thread through, but um, that does take extra time. So uh, you'll find what works for you, but it's very helpful to have them stuck together. All right, everyone, what I have here is an enlarged view of a double running stitch. And that's the stitch that I prefer when I'm using sinew. Um, it holds together a really tight seam and there's a lot of extra support because you have two threads that are involved. So if one slips or gets cut, the other one is there to support it. It's often used in embroidery to make lots of beautiful designs and things like that. And the key to making a good double running stitch is having a consistent space in between the stitches, um, the interval in between, as well as having the consistent stitch length. So that's what we want to shoot for. Um, so there's different ways you can do it. You can weave both threads simultaneously, um, which can be very helpful when doing like things like moccasins with a tight curve where there's maybe a welt or other leather pieces involved, more than just two layers. Um, or if you have a long strip to stitch, then I find it's much easier to do two running stitches uh, in the opposite direction or really the opposite side of the fabric. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate today. So if you start weaving one fabric, you begin here, leave a little tail, you go up and down and you find a new space equal an in interval. Okay, so that's your first thread, it goes up and over, and so it's going to, as this comes down onto the fabric, it's going to look like this, where it shows on the outside and the inside of the buckskin, okay? And then when you add your second thread, it's going to be like this, so the opposite, so you would start from the opposite direction here, come down through and up and so on. So ultimately your seam is a constant thread alternating one thread to the other. So it can look like that if you are embroidering different colors. And obviously you would want to cinch this very tight together. This is just for the sake of the demonstration. So <clears throat> the double running stitch is one of my favorites.
We have finished our main stitch here on the lovely camouflage quiver. Now we're going to attach the bottom. And I made these reinforcement patches here, but I realized that I don't want to use my um, camouflage box skin for that. Instead, I think I'm going to use a normal piece um, or a stiffer piece that I wouldn't actually use for clothing and attach that to the bottom. I'm going to cut it just to the inside of this so that it sits kind of in the middle and then it'll make it easier to stitch this here. Um, maybe about an eighth of an inch or so from the edge is where I want to stitch this so I'll put the other one just inside of that. And I think, you know, that'll make it last that much longer. If I have any sharps in there, it'll be less likely that they poke through and um, give it a little bit more rigidity. <laughs> All right, so we have finished our quiver bottom. It's a nice little leather frisbee, uh, camouflage leather frisbee. Kind of looks like a moon almost. It's kind of fun. Full moon in the bottom of me quiver. So we're going to attach this now to the quiver body. And we're going to basically just go nice and slow and easy. Get a nice uh, attachment here, edge to edge, without too much overlap. And seal it up. Perfectly, darling. So we want to take our time and make sure we get good holes in the right spot. Um, stitching around curves can be tricky sometimes, so you have to be extra careful about uh, your seams lining up. Another stitch in time, one stitch at a time. Well, we could call this finished. Um, we have a lovely uh, camouflage buckskin quiver here and a super solid belt loop and all that. Nice reinforced bottom, so it should last a while. However, I do also want to have the option of being able to carry it on my shoulder through the forest. So what I'm going to do is modify the original pattern just slightly by adding a very small loop to the bottom. And then I'll be able to attach a strap or detach a strap as I wish. In that case, it'll be perfect. So, I find that does happen often with projects where I'll have a kind of vision in mind and then as I get into it I realize, oh, I want to add a little reinforcement or I want to add this or that. And so, it's kind of like a recipe. And once you figure out how the recipe works and how the leather wants to work, then you can kind of improvise upon that as you go and make things to suit your needs uh, that much more closely. We are so close now, all we have to do is finish making the strap. So what I've done is I've slit both ends, I'm going to fold them over on top of each other, then make a little loop on the end, attach this here so you have that little loop, and then I'm going to run a line of stitches down the entire length of the strap and that will prevent it from stretching because buckskin does want to stretch. If you want to avoid that, you have to do some kind of hem on the edges. So I'm going to do one hem on both sides and she'll be done.
So I ended up making one loop at each end of the strap and I did a double seam uh, to hold that to fasten the end. Now it'll be easy to take it on and off with just a small piece of thong and I could use the strap for other things if I wanted to. So we have a nice sturdy strap. It shouldn't stretch too much because of the long stitch here and I think it should last quite a while.